Using Layer 2 virtual switches inside of GNS3, it's a perfect playground for individuals who want to learn the basics of ether channel and spanning tree and trunk ports and access ports. It's all available inside GNS3. Let's take a look. Our objective in this nugget is to demystify the concept of switching inside of the GNS3 environment. Because if you've been around GNS3, you've heard people say and you've read, GNS3 doesn't do switching. Well, it doesn't do a lot of the advanced switching features, but guess what? It does a whole boatload of very powerful switching functions, including spanning tree protocol 802.1D, the original flavor, not extra crispy, but the original flavor. It does trunking, access ports, VTP, and supports ether channel. You can do all of that virtually inside of GNS3. Now the, the key is how do we pull that off? The way we do that is we get a router and we put in a 16 port switch module. So this device right here is really just a 3700 series router that I've installed a 16 port switch module in it. Now, I didn't physically install it. I just turned off the topology, double clicked, configured this device and told it I want that 16 port switch module inside of it. And I did that to all four. So really this is five routers. I changed the icons on these just to make it look a little bit better. I also put clients on each of these VLANs. So I've got three production VLANs, VLANs 10, 20, and 30. They all have their respective subnets. These are access ports in blue and trunks in red. And there's an ether channel right there as well to get full bang for the buck. We're doing external router on a stick just for fun. So we have a trunk there and then we have an access to the internet and we're doing NAT slash PAT. So this entire topology can actually get on the live internet. So our focus in this nugget, however, is just to make you aware of the amazing switching functionality that we have. And let me show you some commands that you might be surprised to see. So this whole topology is up and running. And this, let's go to switch four. That's this guy right here. On switch four, let me show you a few commands that are exactly the same on a switch and a router. For example, show interface trunk. Just like it's always been. So the same details that you'd see on the switch regarding trunking, you can see right here as well. And we could detail it. That's going to be a topic for another nugget. But here's the output from show interface trunk, just like a layer two switch. If we wanted to see the details of a port, let's go check out a port. How about we're on switch four? So we're right here. Let's look at the details for FA0 slash 13. How would we see the details? Well, on a switch, we could do something like this. Show interface FA1 slash 13, and we throw on the keyword switch port at the end. And that shows the layer two functionality of that, how it's administratively configured, how it's operational running, all that same stuff is right here as well. And because it's a, currently it's trunked, it says, okay, it's administratively configured as a trunk. That's this guy right here and it's operationally as a trunk as well. It's using .1Q, which is fantastic. And we could verify that with the show interface trunk command. We could also do VTP. Now, <laughs> friends, don't let friends use VTP in a production environment because it is very dangerous. So what we'd want to do is maybe go to transparent mode, show VTP status. So there's VTP up and alive. I've got mine in transparent mode at the moment. And if we want to see VLAN information, we do a show well, we can do a show VLAN command, but let's do a show interface VLAN one. So we have switched virtual interfaces. This is the management interface on this switch. I've assigned it the IP address of 10.0.0.104, and that's on VLAN one. And if you have multi-layer switches, you can do routing right there at the switches as well. In fact, these routers can do multi-layer switching because they were born as routers. So we can either do layer two only, or we can do layer three routing and layer two forwarding. Take your pick, it's all built inside of GNS3. Now there's a couple of new commands that I would like you to be aware of, and these are, these are important. Because a lot of times people, the first thing they'll do, they'll set up a switch module, and they'll say, okay, great, I wanna do a show VLAN brief. And it doesn't work, and they say, ah, oh, we're done. <laughs> I'm not gonna do this anymore. Well, there's a slightly different command because it is a router with a switch module. It is show VLAN dash switch. How hard is that? Not very hard, my friend. So check this out. What we've just done is we said show VLAN switch. That's the command because it's a 16 port switch module inside of this router. And it gives us the same output. It's very similar output as a show VLAN brief on a switch. So here's our VLANs that exist. Here's the ports that are assigned. These are all in VLAN one. And we have one port in VLAN 10 and that's FA11. And guess what? That's perfect. It's exactly where it should be. So that's a great way of verifying those details. One other one is spanning tree. 
That's a huge one. And here's another failing for a lot of times people go, well, let's do a show spanning tree for VLAN 1. And they press enter and they say, oh, it doesn't look like the switch. Well, there's a slightly different command that we need to add. And that's simply by saying, I want to see the brief version. And you say show spanning tree VLAN X and then the keyword brief, check this out. It looks just like a normal layer two switch. Now it's not going to run multiple spanning tree. It's not going to run rapid spanning tree, but as far as basic spanning tree and learning it, it's fantastic because it's really running it. So we have spanning tree coursing through the veins of this network as we speak. So here we have on switch four, it shows us that the root port is the port is the port channel interface. So the root port is going that way. So this ether channel is our root port, which also confirms our port channel. And we also have a designated port going this way because we're forwarding on both. If we wanted to track the whole thing, we could find exactly which ports are blocking and for which VLANs, because we do have four VLANs running, VLANs 1, 10, 20, and 30, and there's per VLAN spanning tree with a separate instance for each and every one of those. One last piece that's very interesting to practice with is ether channel. Now the ether channel between switch one and switch four right here, it doesn't support LACP, it doesn't do port aggregation protocol, but it certainly does support ether channel. You simply hard code it and tell it that it's ether channel. And then you can use the commands to verify and practice with it. For example, on switch one, we'll do a show ether channel. Take a look at our options here. Let's go for a summary. So it's a summary of the details for the ether channel. If we want to say, I want to see the details for it. Go ahead and do the detail option. Again, giving you all the great information. Check this out too. If we want to change the method that it distributes the load between the two interfaces in that ether channel, we can go ahead and do port channel and we specify load balance. And here's our options, you know, based on destination IP or destination Mac or source destination IP, etc. Very similar to the options we'd have on a switch that was implementing ether channel. In this nugget, we've taken a look at the fact that GNS3 really can do quite a bit of basic switching functionality with all the options we just looked at. The really the biggest difference is we have two commands that we need to add on to. The show spanning tree, we use the brief keyword at the end to give a similar output as we had on a switch. And we also have the show VLAN dash switch as opposed to show VLAN brief. But all the others that I demonstrated for you in this nugget are identical that what we'd see on a layer two switch. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.